Hit next on the Marmy Rock Show, making his first appearance on the Marmy Rock Show, we have Dominic Muzio from Wicked Garden. They're out of Las Vegas, Nevada. They got a new album out right now called Post Dystopian Leisure Music. Uh, Dominic, welcome to the show. Hey, you doing, Rocky? Man, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure, man. So, um, hey, interesting story behind your band. Take me a little bit on the journey of how you guys uh, so quickly went from being voted best cover band in Vegas to now releasing an original record. That's what happens when you tell me I can't do something. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We were. Um, it's funny. Like, like this band has always been like an outsider. We were the first uh, like grunge alternative cover band in Vegas. Although all the cover bands in Vegas tend to do '80s metal. And uh, so we just, you know, Sean started the band back in like 2011, and you know we kind of solidified around 2014. And we just played covers, and you know we played, you know, Nirvana and Soundgarden and stuff like that, and uh, we did really well. Obviously, like I said we won best cover band like three years in a row. And then one night I was outside of one of the clubs we were playing, you know, after a show, and some drunk dude just came up to me. He's like, "Yeah, cover bands suck. Let's see you write your own stuff." And I was like, "All right." So <laughs> we did. And uh, <laughs> just like in that in that weird twist of fate, like we we, we wrote two songs, and uh, we we play them at a show one night, and somebody taped them, you know, a videotape, put it up on Facebook, and it got like a thousand shares and, and put all over the place, and then it started like hitting record companies. So like within like literally ninety days, we started getting offers, you know, and it hurt exactly two songs live. So uh, we said, well, we maybe got to something here, so let's write some more. And we recorded like five songs, and we were negotiating with a couple of labels, and then finally we were like, you know what, we're just gonna put this out on our own. And like, like at zero hour, the Vanity Music came in, they offered us a deal, and it was a good one finally, and they said, yeah, we want a full album. So like, shit, back in the studio, write five more songs. You know, and <laughs> yeah, put it out, so. It's kind of weird, man. It was a Cinderella story for guys that have been doing it for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like it, it hit really quick for you guys. Now, uh, I've been listening to the record today, and when I go through it, it seems like there's like multiple genres almost within one record. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. And, and that's, uh, you got to credit Sean, uh, the lead guitar player, because, uh, you know, Sean was like, I want every song to be individual. He didn't want like a concept album, but not in the sense of like, you know, the wall, but we meant like, didn't want every song to sound exactly the same, because he really wanted to show that we had so many different influences. So it just kind of fell out that way, like nothing was off limits. If somebody wrote something that was like, you know, jazzy, all right, we're going to do that. You know, that sounds kind of punk, cool, doing a punk song now, you know, so... I think it was, it, it was you know, it, it, I fought Sean with it, you know, I was like, I don't think it's a good idea, but when we were done, I was like, yeah, that was the smartest thing to do, we, we can't be pigeonholed at this point. So, I almost never asked Band about, like, how they got a name for a record title, but it sounds like there might be a little a kind of funny story about how yours came about. Tell me about how you came up with post-dystopian leisure music. So, uh, um, it, it's funny, it's, it's such a stupid story, and every time I tell it, I still laugh at it, um. So we were recording when I mean Sean were doing uh, guitar overdubs, and we had been in the studio all day, and we had been drinking beer because that's what we do. And there was a break in the recording, and I don't forgot what was going on, but we had, we had like a forty-five minute break. So we just started like goofing around and like interviewing each other, like really stupid, you know. And Sean does this amazingly bad British Cockney accent; it's like so offensive. And <laughs> I was interviewing him. I was like, "How would you describe Wicked Garden's new sound?" And he was just like, "It's Paris dystopian Legion music," and I'm like. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, like, and, you know, like, at that point, we had no title. We were just like, we just, like this thing's gonna be called Wicked Garden One. Like, we had no title whatsoever. And then I called the other guys. What do you think of this? Like, that's fucking great. Like, okay, boom, title. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, hey, there's a music video I was watching today out there for the song Already Gone. Tell me a little bit about that music video, and uh, was that a special record store of some kind, or was that more of a studio setup? That's actually where we recorded the records. So that's 11th Street Records out here in Las Vegas. And in the back of that record store is National Southwest Recording Studios, and that's where we recorded the album. So we wanted to, you know, like, like let's be completely honest, we had zero budget, you know, we had no money. So, uh, but the guy that owns it, Juan uh, Corso, he also helped produce and engineer the record with me. So we kind of wanted to do something like to, to thank him in a way. So basically we just rented the place out for two hours and we filmed it there. We just figured this is where everything started, we should do it here. Now plus give him a little you know, a little lot of people ask about it. Um, and it worked out really good because what we did was uh, my, my kids are completely involved in that. Like my, my son, 
shot the video with my fiance. Uh, my daughter's the girl in the video, so, you know, that steals the record and everything. Then my son edited it and everything, so it was a family affair. Uh, and it came out, in my opinion, it came out really good. Just like I said, it cost me like a dinner at Olive Garden with my kids. Like, that was it, you know, so, so I'm pretty good. <laughs> That's a nice budget to, to be able to shoot a music video on, and I love the concept of the good old days of going in and finding a vinyl record, so a uh, cool video. Um, yeah, well, well, that, and it, it, I mean, you know, not to get too heady on it, but I did have an idea of mine when I came up with it, was it also shows, like, you know, what happens with music these days. It's like, oh, I like this band. I can't, my mom's going to steal it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't see that the first time, but now I get it. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. So, um yeah, she's still she's still very like fuck I've been still so I'm like, you know what, hey, if, if she gets it gets the record out there and she tells five of her friends, maybe one of them will buy it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hey, when we go all the way down the bottom of the record, I guess the end last track or so you find of the tune I fifteen South. Tell me about that. That was written uh, completely by uh, Sean Trojan, the, the guitar player. Um, beautiful song, man. Like, he came in with that just done. He's like, here's the lyrics, here's how it goes, here's your parts, and that was it. Like, like wow. And, uh, you know, we, we ganned on it, we, we all loved it, and we had Todd Kearns coming in from Slash's band, he's a good friend of ours. And he was going to sing on another, he was on, on, he's also on Good Luck on that record. And uh, he got there, we only had two hours with him. And he did good luck, like, quick, you know? So we're like, well, let's give this a shot. You know, hey, Todd, sing this song for us. You know, and of course, he's freaking incredible. And uh, we, we got it down, and everything sounded great. He left, and then I went in, and I just recut the first verse, and then I just did vocal harmonies over what he did for the second and the, and the chorus. And when we were done, we were just like, holy shit, that sounds amazing. Like, we, like, we, like it was like the one song at the end where we were like, wow, that's us. You know, like, it just sounds great. It's, it's a beautiful song. So um, you kind of just mentioned the other song. I wanted to know a little bit about the lyrics too, and that was the song "Good Luck." So in the in I, when I listen to that song, who are you singing to in that song, or maybe should I sing, say who are you singing about? I wish I, you know what. Here's the thing: that's uh, Sean wrote that. I don't know. Um, that's actually Troy singing lead, our bass player, and um, so it's another song that Sean wrote like completely by himself, and he's been very uh, cryptic about what it, what or who that song's about so I don't know I have an idea um, if you like if you really want to take the lyrics as a uh, you know uh, like for the face value of what they sound like it sounds like just kind of being set up with somebody like oh, you know, do this yourself you know like uh, I'm not going to help you anymore that type of thing yeah um, but Sean is he, I love Sean like Sean's a, he is one of my best friends he's a great guy and He's one of those guys where you can never tell if he's kidding when he's being serious. And with that lyric, it's kind of like, man, is he being sarcastic? Is he angry? Like, I don't know. He won't tell me. He's just like, yeah, it's just a song. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hey, what was the biggest challenge you faced in getting this record released? Um, honestly, the biggest challenge was was finding a deal that works for us because we had a few. You know, um, it, it, we had a couple of labels that wanted to put it out or, or put out like an EP or something like that. And we were absolutely fine with that. But when it came down to actually getting them to concrete, say, yes, here's what we're going to do for you, we got a lot of runaround, you know? Mm -hmm. Or we got ghosted, which happened a couple of times where like, you know, I got on the phone, I want to sign the band, I want this, we're going to do this. Okay, great. Hey, we're ready to go. And then nothing, you know? Yeah. So we had finally just said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to put it out ourselves. We formed our own record label. And we, would get, we were literally like ready to like press you know, distribute um, CD Now or CD Baby, whatever it is. And then Dave Tedder from Vanity Records, who has, you know, seen the van a couple times, he called us up and said, wait, don't do anything. Come meet me tomorrow, you know? So I went out with Dave and we went to breakfast and we talked and then, you know, me and him and Sean went out for beers later on the next night and we were just like, yo, okay, this makes sense. Because his ideas were basically what we were looking to do. He didn't bullshit us and say, oh, I'm going to make you guys the next big star. So he's like, look, we're going to put this record out. Maybe we can get a few hundred people by, you know? Yeah. And it was just like, yeah, that sounds good, you know? And, and uh, it worked out really well. I mean, the only downside, and it's not really a downside, is that you know, when you sign with somebody else, you're on their time frame. So we had to wait seven months to put it out. Because the album has been done almost a year at this point. Right. But, you know, so we were instantly get stuff out there. But, you know, in the end, I think it just worked out great. Right. So what are the prospects for seeing you guys do a tour? Uh, are you going to go out and try to hit the road, maybe make it out east here? or? I would, where, if you don't want to ask, where exactly are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we're, good. we're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, so we're right here in the middle oh, of the east coast. Yeah. 
So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, so as of right now, it looks like starting at the end of September, we're going to be going out and mostly on the, on the West Coast. So the West, the Southwest, maybe some forays into like the middle of the country, and then we're going to kind of reassess and see what to do after the first of the year. Because, uh, you know, nobody wants to be turned on the holidays, don't blame them. Yeah. I would love to go out east. I'm, I'm from New York City myself. I would love to go back out east, you know, and, and get back. I, right now, I can't. I can put maybe. But it uh, looks like in the September through... Uh, basically through the Christmas holiday we'll be uh, hitting around the, uh, the west coast well um, hey man where's the best place you want people to go to find the band find your music Do you want? is it a website a Facebook where do you want people to go to learn more about you well you can go of course the Facebook site which is that's Facebook uh, it's Wicked Garden Vegas uh, you can go to our website which is wickedgardenlv.com um, and you know just do a search for Wicked Garden Vegas band so there's a couple other uh, Wicked Gardens which, you know I'll say what they are um but you can get everything, you know, information there, and then we'll also have a listing of all the stores that the record's going to be in on Friday. And, of course, if you want to order it online, you can do that on Amazon, eBay, wherever the hell they're selling records these days. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be, <clears throat> when you search at the One Wicked Garden with the band called Post Dystopian Leisure Music, so you'll be able to find That's it for sure that way. So, <clears throat> hey, uh, Dominic, man, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us tonight, and uh, good luck on, uh, you know, keeping that record moving, the momentum. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys, and thank you so much, and uh, if you need anything else, it goes forward.